One of my greatest frustrations as an instructor is the simple fact that majority of my students don't take organic chemistry because it's not required. Hang on, my frustration is not that the students don't take it. It's that biology textbooks do a lousy job of explaining how to read molecular drawings. And since students don't take organic chemistry, they don't really know how to interpret them. And that puts them at a huge disadvantage. So this video is going to briefly explain to you how to read a drawing of a molecule in organic chemistry before we actually get into our macromolecules. So let's start with a conceptually simple, but as you'll see in a moment, fairly complex organic macromolecule that most people have heard of, cholesterol. Now here's cholesterol's chemical formula. It's 27 carbons, 46 hydrogens, and one oxygen. First off, you can see why it's called a macromolecule. With 27 carbons, 46 hydrogens, and an oxygen, it's not small. If we actually just draw every single atom in all of its glory, it's going to look something like this. Now that's a nightmarish figure. I mean, let's be frank, that's hard on the eyes. It's hard to follow what's going on there. So we have some ways of simplifying this. One of these is to identify functional groups. Now we'll talk about functional groups in the next video, but here's one example of a functional group. This oxygen-hydrogen combination can be simplified to this OH as I've now drawn it. In addition, we have several what are called methyl groups. These are carbons with three hydrogens bound to them. So we see one here, 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 and here. If we take all these and just rewrite them as CH3, that gets a little bit easier on the eyes. Now, if you look at this molecule, the vast majority of what's here is carbon and hydrogen. And so one of the things we'll do is ignore the hydrogens. We'll assume if we show a carbon in a molecular drawing and we don't show a total of four bonds, any bonds not shown must be to hydrogen. So look, we identify all of the extraneous hydrogens shown here and just delete them assume that they're there but don't draw them, that really cleans up the picture. Now that leaves us with all these carbons. One way we can deal with all these carbons now is again to imply them. And we'll imply them with vertices, points where lines come together. If lines come together, it means there's a carbon there. Every line off of it will go to the molecule or to the atom that's attached to it. And if it's a hydrogen, we'll just ignore it. And so that cleans it up to now look like this. This is much easier on the eyes than what we started with. It's very easy to interpret this. And frankly, even a lot of chemists, organic chemists, won't even draw the CH3s. They'll just say any place where it ends we'll assume is a CH3. So we could even further simplify it to this. Personally, I don't like doing that. I like the CH3s to be left in place, per se. Um, but this is as simple as it will get. When you're looking at a molecule like this, every vertex is a carbon. If there's fewer than four bonds shown, it's assumed that those missing bonds go to hydrogens. And everything that's not a carbon or a hydrogen will be drawn in, such as the oxygen group bound to the hydrogen there. So use these rules in reading organic molecule diagrams. Single covalent bonds are single lines. Double covalent bonds are double lines. We've seen that before. Carbon atoms are typically vertices. We don't show them. Hydrogen atoms bound to carbon atoms are implied. We definitely don't show them if we don't have to. All other atoms are going to be labeled. So things like sulfur, nitrogen, oxygen will be shown. When in doubt, assume carbon and hydrogen. Don't look at one of these molecules and say, oh, there's nothing labeled, so there's no atoms there. If you don't have atoms labeled, it's because it's all carbon and hydrogen. Functional groups, which we talked about in the next video, will be clearly represented, and you want to know their functions.